Hey, what's up? It's Griff. This is Griff Reviews Books, formerly Griff Burns Books. We never burned any books, so we just reviewed them. We also read poetry here, which I think is cool. Um, and I'm Griff, and welcome to Griff Reviews Books. I have some great news for you. I'm not going away. I'm still reviewing books. And uh, I know I've been about a month off, but I've had a cold, it's busy, holidays, all that. I got a new plan for the new year. New year, new me, what, what, what? Anyways, I'm going to bust out a quick review on these three classic holiday uh, manuscripts. And then, and then I'm going to start doing a review every month for you. So the first in January will be Tim Wu, The Master Switch. So pay attention, subscribe, like, comment. Give me a book review challenge. I love those. My wife challenged me with this one. We're going to get into that just in a bit. Just in one little bit. First, I'm going to tell you, at the new year... I'm going to drop a video, The Poetic Edda. I'm probably only going to review the Volepspa, um, the, prof the Seer's Prophecy um, from Norse mythology here. So that's going to be part of this review. Also, my dear friends for my birthday bought me this amazing book, The Book of Five Rings by, uh, I'm going to murder this pronunciation, Miyamamoto Musashi. So very cool samurai stuff. I'll review that same at the end of the year, coming up in the new year. So for my New Year's video, also, I bought this book. I love the Art Awards. one of my favorite manuscripts. I read it a ton in college. And so a very cool book review coming at you at the New Year. So subscribe, like, comment, challenge me to a book review. I love that stuff. Um, <clears throat> today's book review and poetry is brought to you by me. me I'm just doing this on my own. Um, if you'd like to support me uh, in poetry reading, please go buy my book, Burned in Babylon. Broken Bitter But Not Ever Giving Up, The Manifesto of Rob Wolf Griffiths, a toxic grunt. It's available on Amazon. Uh, or just reach out to me and I can get you a copy as well. Uh, also follow me on Instagram. I do do poetry readings live on there, but just kind of when I feel like it from now on. But uh, book reviews every month, 2023. Here we go. Let's go. Okay, so this book review is also brought to you by my beautiful wife, um, who I love and adore and supports me in my crazy ass YouTube video aspirations and my writing bullshit. Uh, this book was challenged after she read she read it. She wanted me to read it as a challenge. And so uh, I'm grateful for that. Like I said, I love reading challenges. This is Hearts of Fire, Eight Women in the Underground Church. It's put out by um, <clears throat> The Voice of the Martyrs, which is obviously it's a Christian publishing corporation that is very evangelical based so it's 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 a uh, bible thumpers bang oh just kidding y'all i love you um anyways this book is inspirational for a christian like me as well so uh, before we get to that i want to share with you one poem i did write that's christian um and uh tells my story it's in my book so a uh, little poetry then we'll get to hearts of fire i promise <clears throat> this is Freedom Scars from me. Uh, it's in my book, Burned in Babylon. Go check it out on Amazon. <clears throat> Free, dumb scars. I wake up scarred by my patriotism. Even when I hate America, my scars remind me of my patriotism. When I have discerned right from wrong, my scars remind me of my patriotism. When I cry out for justice, my scars remind me of my patriotism. When I struggle with a depraved society, my scars remind me of my patriotism. When I suffer under capitalism, my scars remind me of my patriotism. When I mourn for those better than I who died, my scars remind me of my patriotism. When I die, my scars are silent. So too is my patriotism. When I wake up with Jesus, my God has cleansed my scars and forgiven my patriotism. Okay, not the best literary um, poem there, but you get the message, right? Uh, so that's my poem, Free Dumb Scars, uh, Freedom Scars, however you want to pronounce it. Now, let's get to Hearts on Fire. This is an amazing publication, y'all. Everyone should go check it out. Uh, Got some notes. I'm gonna go off my notes here. <clears throat> so uh, it was put out by what we said, the Voice of the Martyrs, and it was first published in 2003, and then again in 2015. It is available on Amazon. I highly recommend if you're interested in anything Christian-based, check this out. If you're even not interested in Christian-based but non-American kind of first-hand accounts of women um, being oppressed. Just flat out, okay? So even if you're not a Christian, but you may be a feminist, 
This is a great book. Uh, it has first-hand accounts of eight women, which is an amazing feat. And also, one thing I noticed about the book is that some of the stories of the women, because they are wives and mothers, and this is a, a detaching a little bit more to my realm where the academic historian comes out, they are also stories interwoven with those about husbands and children. Um, matriarchal history is extremely important in uh, especially documentation of the history in that, that sense, more than archaeology. But like when you have the stories of the mothers and the wives, you also get the stories of the men and children in their lives. And so that is an extremely cool thing about this book. It's also about the stories of the whole family sometimes and about people who have been oppressed um, in other places besides America, essentially. So they, they come from uh, Russia and they also come from Indonesia and India. So there's stories in here about a bunch of women, eight in particular, one from China as well, one from Pakistan. And so there's a lot of good stories about uh, global feminism. Fair? Okay, cool. Also, there is a lot of evangelicalism in this book. Be prepared for it. I'm not going to, like slap you with it. It's coming out at a direct pace. It quotes the gospel. Where it quotes the gospel, mostly it uses the King James Version of the Bible, unless otherwise printed. Very well publication that's printed very well. Table contents is beautiful. Uh, the whole layout of the format of this book is very professional. Uh, one thing I like about these kinds of books, besides obviously it is kind of in my realm of philosophy and uh, theology, I, I am a Christian, back row Baptist, if you're checking. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a good book. It's a good book, period, even if you're not a Christian and you want to learn more about first-hand accounts, you are going to read a lot of scripture, and maybe that doesn't interest you, or maybe even from a non-Christian or a questionable kind of like deciding out for yourself, you are interested. Check it out. Check it out. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I have trouble. I'll be flat out honest. I have trouble separating my personal beliefs from stories like this. So, like, I read it through the lens of a Christian who's almost an idealist and wants to go out and be like, forget my little ivory tower that I have here in this nice Rocky Mountain, beautiful city, <clears throat> except for when it's January and there's smog everywhere. Anyways, we won't get into that. Um... Anyways, I want to go out and help these people. And sometimes helping them is stopping what's upstream from causing these tragedies. And much of this is political. It's very political. Geopolitics is massive in this book. But in a first-hand account, that is hard for me to swallow. It takes time for me to be like, I can't help this person and I still can learn from them. And I know that they still exist in the world. Now, there is some amenity along with these stories. All the names are not shared, okay? So a little bit of cloak and dagger Christian stuff, which is cool. It's cool to me. Like, they have secret baptisms in Pakistan and China. And, and so, like, those places um, could possibly want to use names and dates and stuff to target people. There's atrocities in this book. This book is just as much about genocide as it is evangelicalism. Um, and uh, so if you're into reading about, I don't know, a bunch of jihadists slaughtering people in Indonesia, stories in here. So come check it out. Come read it. Read it with an open mind. Read it with an open heart is what I would ask um, of you more than an open mind. Like I said, it's hard for me to detach from the desire to go there and be like, no, not today. Not with these people. Um, anyways, uh, so with that all said, I can relate also to these women because I've had a very personal experience with my faith where I've ebbed and flowed throughout it. And so there's stories of that too. There's stories of people who, not just stories of the, the Christian saint who's always believing that God is out to love them and give them the best possible Outcome. No, there's stories of skepticism in here. It's eight stories of women who go through a journey with faith. And I think they're beautiful, all of them. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm going to go to my notes here a little bit. Like I said, it's hard for me to detach. Let's actually dive into the book. So there's some stuff in here. 
like I said, uh, like this one, I'm going to read this quote. This is from page 37 of the book, and it's talking about Adele and her story. When she and Christina were forced to move in with Alamine, her new husband, Adele believed the situation couldn't get any worse, but the situation did get worse. And so essentially this woman was captured and then married off to uh, a Muslim man who had who practiced polygamy. He's a jihadist, first of all. So he, and he practiced polygamy. And Adele knew that her husband was alive, actually, at this point, too. I believe that's Adele's story. And that's, check it out. It's, it's heart-wrenching. And for me, I just go back and fall back to like, no, I'll, I'll die first. Come get me with my constitution gripping it in my hand, my rifle and Bible and the other. Um, previous, so this one talks a little bit about the oppression politically, uh, where a woman is falsely accused and her Christian uh, church, her underground church in China is falsely accused of committing essentially what we would call hate crimes against another community in China. And she's falsely accused of this because she's good at witnessing. She was a non-believer at first, and then she went into being a believer. And it, it's harrowing st stories of heroines, and I, I love it. Um, there, I, I mentioned also how these are first-hand accounts, historical first-hand accounts of matriarchal history. That's where I want to go now because there is a story here about an a Australian family who suffered an atrocity uh, in India. And here uh, on page 249 it talks about this atrocity that is uh, violent and graphic. Uh, it's not necessarily graphic in the book, but you they don't pull any punches either. So I'll, I'll just read straight from the book here. Assailants put straw under the jeep. Dara Singh was the first to set it on fire. When Hadson rushed in, to try to douse the flames with water, he was brutally beaten. The heartless mob stood and watched while Graham, Philip, and Timothy screamed in agony until the flames ended their cries and turned their bodies into ashes. That is pretty graphic about these three missionaries, a man and his two sons, being burned alive in a jeep in India in 1999. So let's be let's 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 have a little bit of political. I go to the political. This happened in 1999. People in my city complained about shit that happened 300 years ago about people being burned alive. This Christian miss missionary in India was burned alive with his two sons under the age of 14, both of them, in 1999. Okay, so, like I said, it's hard for me not to want to be like, what? Like, you don't do that. Um, anyways, <clears throat> so... Like I said, the really graphic good stories. That one particularly got to me because it reminded me of uh, Otis Lux Huxley, a uh, book that I've read, The Devils of Ludon, which is about uh, an a evangelical preacher actually being burned alive, but this time by the Catholic Church and a bunch of nuns. Check that one out. There's also a book about it, uh, The Devils of Ludon. Not a book. There's a book review on my YouTube channel, The Devils of Ludon. It's on there. Back when we were burning books, bro. Uh, anyways, I'm going to read one more poem, but this one is actually out of the book. And so this is on uh, page 257. And I'll, before we get to that, too, there's also a story in here where a woman is imprisoned and her preacher husband is imprisoned. And she she advanced the gospel by putting pressure on her husband to preach when there was a time where these communists who had come into their country said, no more Christian preaching unless we say you can Christian preach. And Pastor Richard died in prison, um, and that's on page 111. And so like I said, the historical, matriarchal historical focus doesn't just do that. And that's what I love about that kind of focus when you're looking at history, is you get 10 other stories most of the time when their mothers and uh, wives, you get those other those adjacent historical contexts as well. And uh, so that's on page 111, where Pastor Richard is in prison by communists. This is a poem that kind of ends the book. It's a, it is um, Gladys' story, which is about 
Graham and his two sons who were burned in the Jeep. And she comes to stay in India and forgive the assailants that burned her husband and her two children alive. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I can detach from the desire for vengeance on some of that stuff. And so this is where this book convicted me as a Christian. I'm grateful to my beautiful wife for challenging me with that. Um, and uh, thanks, babe. But we'll get to other stuff, reading more cool stuff here next year. Just trust me. This is a poem that ends the book, and it's an uh, Edgar Guest. It's called Safely Home. And uh, I just I want to dedicate this to all the women in this book. And uh, just praise Jesus for your witnesses, ladies. And I love you, and you're beautiful. <clears throat> and this is Safely Home. I am home in heaven, dear ones, oh so happy and so bright. There is perfect joy and beauty in this everlasting light. All the pain and grief is over, ever rentless tossing past. I am now at peace forever, safely home in heaven at last. Did you wander I so calmly, trod the valley of the shade? Oh, but Jesus' love illumined every dark and fearful glade. And he came himself to me in that way so hard to tread. And with Jesus' arm to lean on, could I have one doubt or dread? Then you must not grieve so sorely, for I love you dearly still. To Try to look beyond earth's shadows. Pray to trust our Father's will. There is work still waiting for you, so you must not idly stand. Do it now while life remaineth. You shall rest in Jesus' land. When that work is all completed, he will gently call you home. Oh, the rapture of that meeting. Oh, the joy to see you come. And that is uh, Safely Home, Edgar Guest, in the book, Hearts of Fire, put out by uh, the Voice of the Martyrs. Go check it out yourself. Read it. Learn from it. Grow from it. And that is all I have. Stay tuned for the New Year's book review. I know... And it's going to be completely different 180 turn here with the philosophy and these classical holiday hits. I'm Griff. Thank you for watching. This is Griff Reviews Books. Book!